Hello everybody and welcome to the World Cup semi-final between Silse and Ari RTSD. And RTSD has won the coin toss, chosen to receive with his necromantic team, and has a touchback. Both got an extra reroll from the kickoff result. Silse with the undead team. Um, RTSD doesn't play in Champs Ladder at all. He qualified from UK BPL and is British. Silse has hardly played in Champs Ladder, only about 30 games, or 40 games actually. Um, about 50 games. <laughs> and he's got a win rate of 54% in, in Champs Ladder. He qualified from the Franco Bowl and is French. Um, I actually asked them both some hard hitting questions before. Oh, now, first of all, uh, before I do the intro, this was weird leaving this guy. I didn't le like leaving this guy exposed. Also, I didn't like pushing him this way once he is exposed. Um, and neither did RTSD, so he, he greed re rolled this push. Now, he had four re rolls, but he left the, he left the wolf here. Now, this is extremely dangerous obviously the mummy can blitz him push him to there bring two ghouls around surf him um you know you'd you'd trade you'd even even if he got return surfed you would trade that wouldn't you though he probably could probably keep the uh, white fairly safe actually so he probably wouldn't be counter surfed and even if he doesn't get to surf him he's still getting to knock him over with mighty blow isn't he so um that was a I don't know, I didn't like exposing the tackler. I, I would have had him next to the mummy, so at least, you know, you would have had to have get two assists in and, and start basing the mummy. So if you got the pow, you'd be based by mummy and stuff like that. So I didn't like where Silsay positioned his guys, where they could get blitzed by a werewolf. But I also didn't like the way RTSD pushed and then didn't dodge away. Um, so yeah, the, the bad thing for Silsay is here, he has nobody to foul with, and he just goes for the foul with a ghoul um, on a stun player, and gets <laughs> gets a Kaz that regens. So that's like what an amazing first turn there straight away. Oh, also I should say they both added an extra skill from the semi-finals. They both added guard to one of their strong boys. So Zilsa has got two block guard mummies, and RTSD has two block guard fleshies. But um, yeah, that was crazy first turn there. The uh, the exposing of the white, the rash push direction, and lack of dodge out, and then the uh, the foul as well. And already, it's things are looking bad for RTSD on his drive now after losing that wolf. I mean, that that's basically what he's banking on is that wolf removing a bunch of guys. Anyway, I asked them some hard hitting questions before the final, and. Uh, they would both run one thrower on an orc team. Um, if they were their starting vampire team, uh, Silse would take three vampires. RTSD would take four vampires. I think three and four are the only reasonable choices. Um, they both well, they they bought they're both PC players. Um, RTSD says PC gaming master race. Silsay thinks Blood Bowl memes are bad, and RTSD thinks Blood Bowl memes are glorious. If they could choose between fighting a chimp or a goblin, RTSD would fight a chimp because you don't want to risk the gobbles using any secret weapons, which is which is a good point. Um, Silsay would like to fight a goblin or a snotling. Well, I think we'd all, we'd all rather fight a snotling than a, than a goblin, but there you go. Um, Gets a Kaz there. So so now RTSD is down to nine players. And you could almost GFI to base the ball. I wouldn't hate that. I think what I would have done here is I would have got this mummy basing the fleshy here. Um, just get, I quite like being men up, especially now being two men up. I really like the, the mummies, you know, getting involved, basing people up. I don't think it would have been necessarily good to go for it to base there. But it was an option, wasn't it? Or he could have go for it to base the... Uh, the wolf or something, but yeah, I really like, I really like sticking mummies on fleshies because it, it's the best one-on-one -on -one trade you're gonna get. And if they make it a two-on-one -on -one trade, they're still just one dicing you. So um, yeah, I, w I would have absolutely stuck uh, stuck this mummy on the fleshy there, hundred um, percent. I think it's a great shout. 
And uh, finally, the worst on red, worst advice I've ever seen on Reddit. Still say doesn't go on Reddit. And uh, RTSD says not to take piling on on a Norse Yeti, which is yeah. I would I would always take piling on a Norse Yeti. And that's what they're there for, isn't it? So good shout from RTSD there. I think there's been worse advice than that. And all of a sudden, Silsa is in a bad spot now with this this little clump of four players here. Um, and these three here not really doing anything. And this this down zombie over there. All of a sudden, everything's looking a bit bad for him. He chooses to go deep with the the mummy, and then base this guy with a zombie I think I would have switched those two positions around um, you know to have the well actually I would have had the mummy here and yeah he can just dodge away but you're making him dodge aren't you whereas here he's got the option to punch you and again he's not getting not getting the mummy based up um, and the, you know, there's it, it's. I'm not. I'm not criticising here. At the end of the day, you know, there, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Um, but definitely, I re I love the idea of mummies being based on flesh golems because they just knock them over every turn. Nearly, you, they, they're mostly knocking them over with mighty blow every turn, and you're taking out like one of their best players. Like if he'd based up this fleshy this turn, this blitz wouldn't have happened, and he would have been. You would have just had a. Zombie and a ghoul free, basically. The, he, he does well here, I think. Uh, RTSD, like it's it's hard, really. and th there was an option there. He uh, he got in quite a good spot over here, actually. Silsay with these these ghouls back. There was an option to run the ghoul behind, and if he had, um, RTSD wouldn't have had this option of like screening off. Um, now, of course, everything in front would have been weaker, and so again, they, you know, a lot of these things—they're not really criticisms. They're just looking at how things could have been done differently, isn't it? And there's all trade-offs to everything. Um, like now, getting this mummy based on a zombie doesn't seem very exciting to me, especially when he could have been based on a fleshy. This guy could finally base a fleshy, or he could blitz one. Now a very very strong spot over here. These three all being down. You could move a zombie over there to keep them all trapped. So he blitzes that fleshy. I'd be tempted to GFI with that with it to get to get the mummy in on that on that fleshy, but never mind. Maybe he'll finally base over here? Nope. Yeah, interesting. Interesting that he wants to keep the mummy free because it can't really react very well. So he goes for the big foul. Now, while I, I like the idea of fouling a wolf with five assists more than two assists, and I like doing it with a zombie rather than a ghoul, he had it locked down anyway, you know. I, I don't think he had to go for that foul. Um, now, obviously, if he'd, if he'd made a removal, it would have been great, but I think he was already taking these three guys out of the play anyway, just with, you know, just with the positioning. I don't think he needed to foul there. Um, but he's got 12 players, you know, so... But again, you know, there's a, there's a good chance of overtime in this game, I think. And... See, this fleshy was able to blitz and free himself up. Now, if that had been a mummy on him, he just wouldn't have been able to. <laughs> he, he could have had, you know, he could have had a zombie on the zombie. Mummy on there, and it would have been a lot harder for him. The other mummy does force a dodge. Yeah, artist, he's done all right, isn't he? He's, he's getting the screen all, every time, but it's uh, it's hard work. <laughs> Crucially, he's four squares in, so he is in scoring range with a double GFI, which is good. But yeah, this this has been hard for RTSD, being losing his wolf and being two players down for most of it. Um, so he bases the fleshy and the ball in one go. I think, again, I would have just based the fleshy. Um, there's a bit of a bit of a chain push on here, isn't there? I would say a bit of a chain push, an, e an easy chain push on 
Chin push. Chain push. I'll try and speak. First thing in the morning, this, to be fair. I think maybe I would have got this mummy somewhere not there. <laughs> but. Yeah, maybe you could have put. I think mummy here might have been better to stop this, but maybe touch out. So, yeah, so let's have a look at RTSD's plan here. The plan is simple blitz there so that he doesn't have to dodge, put in the guard, one dice, get a push, push the tackle away, and then the ghoul's just going to make a dodge with dodge, another dodge with dodge, two GFIs to score. So, quite an easy touchdown if he gets the push. Now, of course, it'll leave Silse three turns to score back, but. It's the only chance he's going to get to score this this half, really. Um, so he gets the both down. So there was an option after rolling the both down um, to then go for the dodge with the team, you know, save the team reroll for a dodge. So you'd have had. Um, should have paused it there. <laughs> so when 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 he rolls the both down, there's the option to then just make the dodge with a team reroll available. Um, because he just used it rerolling the block. So that would have been a 1 in 9 chance of failure instead of a 1 in 6 chance. Now obviously had he dodged away, all he can really do is run back and hope that he doesn't get scored on. Um, whereas by rerolling the block, it fails on 1 in 6. But on a 3+, plus, he's got a really good chance to score. So I can certainly see why he went for the score. Um, you know, can't can't blame him for that at all. I think this was a bit of a mistake position-wise, I think, as it turns out. Oh, no, no, it didn't. I thought it was, but he's got a guard here. So what would have been better if he didn't have a guard would have been to have moved this goal first to here. So the follow-up block would have been a three dice instead of a two. But the guard would have stopped that anyway. So now it's good having this goal there for the pickup. Yeah, these guys getting dominated out of it. And it's it's looking pretty rosy for Silse right now. Now you know it's easy to, and again it's easy to criticise that reroll of RTSD, but because he rolled a skull and KO'd himself, you know if he if he had rerolled it and got a push, then it looks great, doesn't it? So, but yeah, the obviously the the failure was horrific. Um, the failure state was horrific rolling the skull. So you could argue that maybe you could have dodged away, but I, I, I think I would have definitely gone for the same as him. You know, it's a 3-plus to have a really good chance of scoring. Um, in a half where otherwise you're not going to score. So he goes for the 4-plus 1-dice with block. Could have gone for a 3-plus 1-dice without block. I think that would have been better because I think you take the both down there. Like it's not, <laughs> it's not exactly good, but I think maybe you would have taken the both down there. As it happened, I think you would have failed anyway. Um, yeah, you rolled a one. So. <laughs> and now that's that's all she wrote. It's a, it's a score for Silse on defense. So. RTSD is going to have to, you know, now now it makes the, the second half. Silse has just got to protect the ball. Doesn't even have to score. And Silse has got to try and turn him over and score. So he might leave, you know, a breakaway on. And, and that's the thing. Silse has got great breakaway potential with four ghouls. So I don't think Silse should turtle. I think he should threaten a break. Um... Not in a stupid way, not not running down a ghoul unprotected to get blitzed. But I think he should, you know, subtly manoeuvre so that uh, if if and when RTSD commits somewhere, he'll be able to break the other way, um, rather than just turtling for the 1-0. So yeah, RTSD not even trying to do anything. <laughs> Both only got 12 players, so, you know, pretty lucky, to be fair, that you made both regions um, RTSD. But only one KO roll for this Flesh Golem is going to be absolutely massive. One 
two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, you could do a block with block here. Um, I don't like this. Let, let's pause it. One, two, three. You can get a guard in there. Ah, uh, yeah, he can't. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, no, he can't get the. He can't get the second block in. So if you could have three dice the wolf, but he would have to block it there first, which he obviously doesn't want to. He doesn't want to make a blockless block to get a three dice with block. I think I might have just gone for the two dice on the wolf, just you hit the higher value target, but. Certainly, three dice is safer and makes sense. Fleshy comes back, absolutely massive, massive KO roll there. Right, so now it's Silse's drive. Full team, so that the foul send off hasn't hurt him. And you know, if he if he wins the game this half. Then that foul was a good foul to make, wasn't it? But I mean, I think I would have erred on the side of caution and not fouled. And ne neither neither person's taken a taken a, a removal. RTSD two two cas both regen and a KO that came back. So it could have gone very differently. But then of course they could have not been injured in the first place. So. It is what it is, isn't it? Yeah, this is uh, very strong for Silse. Because, you know, the, the, the attrition from the wolf, potential attrition from the claw bomb wolf, you know, it's not really got that much impact on one drive, a singular drive, has it? So, another touchback. There's been two touchbacks so far. And yeah, I think that's... It's hard, but it's hard though because he could. Guinness provided the blueprint for dealing with a claw bomb, which was just completely, you know, um, keep everybody supporting each other to stop the frenzy and everything. But then, if you you want to do that, but then also you want to be able to threaten the break, and if you just leave people exposed like this, then get picked off by claw bomb, can't they? So it's a uh, it's a tough proposition. I like these. Uh, I like all the guard together to stop the whites, the white or the mummies getting knocked over by a core bomb. But yeah, he's he's exposing the the zombies there. Not even any kind of frenzy trap. I think you know even just one in it would have meant that uh, he would have needed to commit more to hit him. So there's the weakness of the. Of the claw bomb there, having to re-roll it, but gets a Kaz, so straight away the Sils is down to ten. Even though it's just a zombie, it's still still a player down, isn't it? And RTSD knows that he can't he can't just play to stop the touchdown. RTSD absolutely has to go for the turnover. So Yeah, it, it's tricky for Salsa, definitely tricky. Big big zombie dodge out actually, otherwise that could have um that could have been a, a mummy blitz and the you know all the all the ghouls could could break at any point. But he just tries to save his save his ghoul a little bit. Makes perfect sense. And I can see why he doesn't. He doesn't want the mummies in the front line in case they get claw palmed, which is absolutely fair. <laughs> he gets a knockdown there. Is is RTSD going to go for the frenzy trap? Looks like it. So this is three, four, five, six. But then it's a block into a 
strength six versus, so it's a two dice into a one dice this blitz. Which is still a frenzy trap, isn't it? I don't think frenzy traps have to be into negatives. Because you don't want to make one dice blocks anyway, especially without block. But he gets the power straight up. And the removal. Cheeky KO. He dodges away so as to not get blitzed by a mummy, potentially. Um, though he wasn't in that much danger because he would have had three defensive assists. It wasn't, it wasn't easy to hit there. Basically, it, 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 that was pretty hard to hit the wolf there, but he still dodged away. Got a little bit scared this time. Making the cage safe and then going for the dodges. I don't hate this running a guy forward like this because I think I think what would be a nice play from well I say nice what could be a possible play from RTSD here would be to blitz this ghoul with the tackle and then get the pawn up back to central so he can blitz next turn because although he wants to turn over he's, he's still got not plenty of time but he's still got enough time to do that. I don't think you want to blitz the ghoul with the uh, pawn wolf just because if you pile on you're miles away then. Um, I think he blitzes this one though. So you know he's got an outlet here at Silse, and I would have preferred to take away the outlet I think. So, <laughs> so he rolls a double skull into a push, into a push. Now he, he's got a block tackler and he's still just blitzing with a, with a palm out of greed. So it makes you wonder if you've just been served with a better serve with block of mighty blow on both of them, doesn't it? Um, and this time he does give up the blitz to the mummy. A 75% knockdown due to no block. And he's removed again. So both, <laughs> there's twice, two times RTSD has blitzed with his claw palm, um, got pushes, not dodged away. And both times he's been knocked out, either by the Mummy Blitz or by the Foul, so... I mean, it's a bit unlucky to have been removed both times, but... That's the thing, isn't it? That's what you've come for. Now, I really don't like this play by Silse here. Um, <laughs> I, I think I... You know, this is... This is very dodgy. Because you're trying to knock down a Fleshy, which he doesn't. So he can block this guy or this guy, and... This is actually a huge dodge by the ghoul there. If he hadn't done that, he could have blocked, he could have put a guard in here. Um, let's pause it. He could have put this guard player in here, could have one diced him for a push. Well, no, for a power actually. And then he could have got a one dice on the ball, um, which would have been, a push would have been an uphill into a one dice or something. Oh, he had, he, this guy could have come around. So, you know, he could have really lost the ball there. And, even though he hasn't lost the ball this turn, he's under a lot of pressure now. Um, I think it's harsh to call it a mistake, that turn by Silse, but it was definitely, you know, probably had a rush of blood after killing the, well, not killing, knocking out the wolf. And I think he's, you know, basically a lax turn positionally, and he's let himself, he's got himself into a lot of trouble now somehow. Ball based by tackle. All the all three guard players are very relevant. And this was a dodgy one dicer to take. I didn't like RTSD making this one dicer. And I really didn't like him rerolling it. That's his last reroll. I think you either don't block there or you don't reroll. I think that was um that was a big big one there that used his last reroll. But you know, it's it's again, it's worked out, hasn't it? You know, so it's like, but it, it's still just a three plus away or a chain. Multiple ways you can chain here. Um, I think the chain that I liked was was getting the guard in there and then blitzing around this way, and then you push him to here. But that's that's still pretty hard because he's got the guards in. Um, so it wouldn't have been great. 
<laughs> um, so yeah, it wouldn't have been. There wasn't an easy way to chain, um, but you could have you could have chained him away from tackle at least. He, is is he just blitzes the tackler away? Goes for the straight up dodge. Now again, I think I would have. He's, he, you know, he's only got one tackler. Um, if I'm Silsa here, RTSD only has one tackler, and he's down. So, I wouldn't have hated going for maybe the, you know, this ghoul dodge first or something, or or just something for a bit of um, you know, stand this guy up or some, just some a bit of safety before making this dodge because you've got the ball on a blodger, and. Making somebody knock you over, you know, it's it's making them roll the dice. He's got no rerolls out of SD, so you really want to force out SD to roll dice. And as it is, this is that was a nice little chain push to get the extra block and knock down. And he's gonna blitz here and, and maybe score, maybe get the ball and have a good chance. Doesn't get the knockdown, and I think you definitely don't dodge here. There's there's no need. He's got three more turns. Um, he's in no rush to to score this drive. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden now, aren't the SDs in a dominant position? So again, I don't know if this is is sloppy play by Silse or bad play by Silse or fantastic play by RTSD. But you know, there's. Maybe missing the mummy hasn't he's, he is missing the mummy, so he'll say. Down nine versus ten. But um yeah, let's just give credit to Art SD for managing to force force something here. Yeah? Um big double skull there. Guess he has to re-roll actually, given how critical the situation is. You don't want to save re-rolls for overtime right now. So <laughs> while he caught the ball, that was a pretty bad player to catch it on, wasn't it? Um, yeah, I'm not sure about that. This is this is the thing. It, if he goes there, it stops him getting the guard on for the easy two dice. But it's still quite easy to get the. Uh, oh dear me. Let's let's pause it again. So he he puts this ghoul in here to stop the flesh golem just going there for the assist, or here. But he's just got to move the guy up and make a two dice block. So I think it would have been better to have moved the ghoul in here so that he, he can't get the, you know, it would be a two dice into a one dice or, you know, because then the guard could only go here or here. He'd have to push to here or here. And then, so then you could have maybe put the ghoul, this ghoul to here, and then this ghoul could have made a GFI to here, um, or to here. So it'd be a, a two dice into an uphill, and you'd just have more players around the ball. It, this guy is not around the ball, is he? I'd, I'd want him definitely want him back to make a screen, just make it harder for RTSD. You know, he, he's got the blitz out and run away now. I think, I think that was a, a mistake by Silse. Um, I think so. <laughs> I think that wasn't a good square because all you're doing is making roll a one in nine block, and that that's all. You know, that's, that's not much of a payoff, I don't think. I think getting him in here is a much better position. Um, but yeah, you know, that's really nitpicking. Again, that he, he's had two minutes to think about it. He hasn't, you know, and he's under a lot of pressure. You know, they've they've, re they've got $1,000 already, but the next one's for, you know, maybe, you know, getting in the final, maybe winning it and getting a PC and everything. So there's a lot of pressure in this game. So he gets the, he gets the PAL and the Kaz. And he pushed him to there. Now, you would have thought you would have pushed him to here, wouldn't you? Um, because if he pushes him to here, there's three squares where it can sc scatter to, which are good. And none of the others are really bad. By pushing him into here, these can be really bad squares. And there's only two good squares instead of three. But it works out for him. And he gets the dodge away. And he gets the pick up. And he gets the touchdown. So, <laughs> you know... Um, yeah, full credit to RTSD. I don't, I don't want to criticise anybody. Um, it is, it is hard, and there is, there are nerves and pressure and everything. And I really don't think, I really don't think Silsa did bad at all there. I just think maybe there was, um, 
there was that one turn that that opened things up a bit. But I don't think it was bad per se. It just it just worked out bad. <laughs> so both both players fail their uh, KO rolls there. The wolf stays out and the mummy stays out. But that means that. Silse only has nine players to try, but you know he's got a chance of a two turn. And now this is the question, isn't it? Do you use your rerolls here to try and force the two turn, or do you save them for overtime? Um, I would definitely be on the more conservative side. Though also I'd have committed. My, I, I, this is now isn't this a weird setup? Okay, ignore ignore the fact that this this guy's going back to the ball. This school can pick up the ball if the if the kickoffs here. This school can't do anything. <laughs> this school can pick up the ball if it's deep. So really, he's, what is his plan here? Put a guard in there, blitz him, and just have no cover at all for the, the blodger who's going to get tackle frenzy. Like he's, He can only get one scoring threat blitzing up here. I would have definitely had either a ghoul, you know, trying to get through this gap, dodge through this gap or something. Um, this one's just not really doing anything, and this one isn't doing a whole lot. So I didn't like, and also the blodger is back to get the ball rather than to go through as a scoring threat. So I really didn't like Silse's ghoul positioning here. But again, yeah, look, it's not a criticism of the players, uh, the coaches. They can obviously... Oh, now this is huge. Double score and he re-rolled. Now that is... That is ballsy, isn't it? Because this is the first action of the turn. He, he did catch the kickoff, but he's got the ball in his own end zone. He's got two turns to score. He can only get one scoring threat unless... Um, this guy pals this guy, and then the goo goes one, two, three, four, five... Six, seven, maybe double GFIs to tag the wolf. Maybe that's a good idea. But, um, yeah, cr pr a bit wild to re roll that double skull, I think, with all the rolls that would have come. Also, he GFIs instead of making a dodge, which was a mistake, but never mind. I mean, that just clearly was a mistake. There's very few things that are clearly mistakes, and making a GFI instead of a dodge with dodge is just, is just worse, straight up worse, isn't it? Um, yeah, so this ghoul just does nothing. Um, and he actually blocks these in the wrong order. So I think in the wrong order anyway. My opinion. <laughs> if he if he blocks this guy first... Oh, let's get rid of the stun. If he, if he... Oh, man. If he blocks this guy first, he can push him to there. And then the block from this zombie would have pushed chain pushed the mummy into the flesh golem which i think would have been really good so if he hadn't just moved this this ghoul nowhere he could have made that block first and then um you know if it's a if it's a pow move the fleshy move the ghoul to base this wolf and then he could have chained the zombie into the flesh golem and now it's just a one dice or one two three four double g fight to get two dice on him so i think there's 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 ways he could have played it better but again, you know, that's... I, I don't want to be hypercritical, you know? There, there's, it's, it's natural, though, isn't it? Because that's, that's pretty, basically all you, can, all you can talk about, really, is things people can do differently and, and, you know, what you do and stuff. There's not really a lot of... Um, a lot else to talk about in a Blood Bowl match, is there? So he blitzes with a tackler. And this is a GFI. And he fails the GFI. And, uh, yeah, so he had a 55% knockdown chance. And then into the GFI. So he's altogether he's about 78, 77% to knock him over there. And didn't get it. And, you know, that, and that's a big commitment that Silse used his re-roll knowing that that was, the, that was the best case situation for Silse, you know? Um... Was to uh, he's still going to get knocked down about eighty percent of the time, and he was only going to have the ball here, and he was going to have to make a bunch of rolls the next turn. But he went for it, so fair play to him. And now he now he's got a decent chance, hasn't he? And he goes for the dodge blitz first, and now here he should have the ball in the corner, 
and you should hand off to him and run down the sideline. But he doesn't. And he even goes, you know, the wrong way. He could have, he could have been here, which would be closer. He wouldn't have had to make that GFI, I don't think. But he makes the pass and he gets the catch. So <laughs> that's pretty unbelievable, isn't it? That he did the last, the two turner. So on their full halves, RTSD got turned over. Then Silse got turned over, so it was 1-1. And then uh, and then finally, the two-turn chance, he gets it. But yeah, I, you know, I, I don't, again, I don't, I don't criticise him. I think the dodge was just definitely wrong. Uh, not making the dodge and making a GFI instead. But... You know, it is. It's a big situation, isn't it? It's semi-final of the World Cup. It's the highest stakes that Blood Bowl have ever been played for, basically. So, you know, you can't, you can't, you know, you can't really criticise him for it. I don't think. But that re-roll. I mean, it was that was a sh it was a shocking re-roll. Re-rolling that double skull, not as in shockingly bad. Just it was an actual shock because. I thought, I, if that was me, I'd have been like, oh, well, let's go to overtime with two re-rolls, you know. And uh, to go for the win, hats off to Silse for going for the win, really. Uh, it was it was definitely ballsy. It was, you know, he, he did have the re-rolls for the next turn, but that was the thing. The fact he knew he was going to get blitzed by a frenzy tackle um, would have put me off it. But then there would have been ways to have stopped the, the frenzy tackle hit, I guess. But he didn't go for them. <laughs> And yeah, now RTSD's got to score a one turn. Um, now I think here, I think here, what what he should have done with a one turner is, well, there's there's multiple ways, isn't there? There's multiple ways. I think he should have blitzed. I think he's just done it a bit wrong. I think he should have knocked down this mummy with a flesh golem, and then blitzed in that way. Um, or even just blocked with a, you know, he could have had a wolf there, could have just blocked in there, then that way or something. I think, yeah, I think that's what he should have done. I think he should have done it. He could, it could have been a lot better. This, and as it happens, it doesn't even work. Even if he gets the push here, um, even if he got the push, he would have had to make like a six plus dodge to um, to get the third push, and he'd be in three tackle zone, so he couldn't get the ball to him. So it was all a bit of a, it was all a bit of a cock up. Um, by RTSD, I, he definitely could have done it better, but you know, again, three minutes, loads of pressure. Can't really criticise him for it. Um, <laughs> the the Pom Werewolf gets MVP despite getting you know got more armor breaks, so we'll say. Um, despite RTSD getting a lot more blocks actually, uh, though a, a, a number of those are one dices. Um, so Silsay made 72% dodges, 100% GFIs, made his pass, <laughs> made his pickup, and 28, 20, 30. So quite good block dice, really, apart from the two double skulls, <laughs> which is uh, something, isn't it? And then RTSD, he made a double skulls, both down, greeted a push, one dice skull, one dice both down into a skull. Um, one dice skulls, you know, he, he made he made a, he made a fair amount of uh, one dices, RTSD, and he got twenty seven thirty three thirty, so a good dice overall. And yeah, bad dodges, fifty seven percent. But yeah, that, that was it. I mean, I think at the end of the day, I think Silse's dice were a little bit better, but I think both played well overall. You know, although although you may think I've been horribly critical. I'm really trying not to be. I, you know, I do I do understand the situations there. And overall, they do... You know, overall, I'm always going to nitpick slightly imperfect things rather than saying, ooh, this is good for every single player, you know. Of course, it's the semi-finals of the World Cup. That You know, they're good players. They're going to mostly play good. And they, they mostly did. And fair play to still say, you know, he went for it. He, he, he ate... That ballsy re-roll on the two dice blitz there um, on the double skulls. A lot of people wouldn't have re-rolled that. He went for it and it gave him the chance at the end. So, well done to Silse. Commiserations to RTSD. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.